We're here in Turin in Italy and behind me is the cathedral which holds one of the most historic relics in um, the whole of Italy, the Troud of Turin. This is believed to be the cloth that wrapped up the body of Christ after the crucifixion. It has on it a very mysterious image. You can hardly see it if you actually look at the cloth, but then if you photograph it and print the negative, there is a very good likeness of a person. So, what's it, the shroud got to do with chemistry? And there are two reasons. It is one of the best examples of radiocarbon dating using radioactive carbon-14 to show how old something is. And the other reason, and that's not known to anybody before you, is the Turin Shroud is probably the subject of the most unsuccessful experiment I've ever done. So let's begin with the carbon dating. So radiocarbon dating is based on a radioactive form of carbon called carbon-14. And carbon-14 is being made in the atmosphere all the time out of nitrogen. Each nitrogen atom has weight 14, and every so often, really quite rarely, a cosmic ray comes out of space and hits a nitrogen 14 and transforms one of the neutrons, the neutrally charged particles, into a proton and electron. And this turns nitrogen 14 into carbon 14. And carbon 14 is radioactive and a collection of atoms of carbon-14 have a half-life of 5,568 years. That means after that time, half the carbon atoms have decayed away. Then after another 5,000 odd years, you're left with a quarter of carbon atoms and so on. So the way it works is this. Carbon-14 dating only works with things that are made from plant material. So when the plants are growing, like the grass all around me here, they are absorbing carbon-14 from the atmosphere. And so they become slightly radioactive. As soon as the grass is cut and the grass dies, it no longer absorbs the carbon-14. And so as the grass continues dead, very slowly the carbon-14 will decay away. So, if you buried the grass and dug it up in 5,000 years' time, half the radioactivity would have gone away. And if you assume that the amount of radioactivity in the atmosphere has been constant for many, many years, then by measuring the radioactivity in something, you can tell how old it is. And you can calibrate it because you can take pieces of wood which have rings from the trees and you can count the rings and from each ring you can measure the carbon-14 and tell whether your calculations are correct and by and large it works very well. In the case of the Turin Shroud it's made out of linen. Linen is made out of a plant called flax so if you take a piece of the Turin Shroud and measure the radioactivity you can then tell when the flax plant that made that piece of cloth died. And carbon-14 dating has been known for quite a long time, since about the time of the Second World War. But the original form, you took a had to take several grams of the material to measure the radioactivity. And obviously, the religious authorities who are looking after the shroud didn't want several grams of it being cut off. There are already holes in the shroud where it was burnt in the 16th century by a fire and they don't want more of them being cut out. So about 20 years ago the techniques advanced enough so you only needed a tiny piece of cloth and then they measured the date but to the disappointment of the true believers the date of the cloth came out to be the 13th or 14th century more than a thousand years after the birth of Christ. And therefore, there's still an argument. Did they take a sample from the right part of the cloth or did they just take a, a later repair? So are there a lot of people who are still arguing what is the age of the shroud?
first in the test in the United States New Mexico desert, then 5,000 miles away at Hiroshima. Radiocarbon dating only works for things that were made before 1945. We will examine the effects on the atmosphere of nuclear detonations. In 1945 was the birth of the atomic era. People started igniting nuclear bombs, testing nuclear devices, and greatly increased the amount of radioactivity in the atmosphere. And therefore, you can no longer assume that the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere has been constant, which you need to do in order to do carbon dating. So let me just tell you about my involvement. My, when I was young, my professor had a friend, a school teacher, Rodney Hoare, who was obsessed with the Turin Shroud. And he wanted to try and work out how the image had been formed on it. So he had a plastic model made of his head and shoulders, hollow. And he wanted us to heat chemicals from the plastic surface where his skin would be and try and evaporate chemicals onto a shroud and see if we could make an image of him. So we put a light bulb inside this head and we tried all sorts of experiments and we could evaporate nothing. So it was a completely useless experiment. But the model of him still exists. Sadly, he's long dead and sits in my daughter's office at the university where she teaches.